I am Osbjörn Solberg. I'm going to give you a short summary of the Norwegian report about pollution from wind turbines. They pollute much more than you think. It's calculations for the Norwegian coast based on research results from the University of Strathclyde. The Norwegian report is made by Jan-Erik Meinbach, Bård Einar Rimereit and me, Asbjørn Solberg. First of all, we are going to have a short introduction. The report shows some examples from the Norwegian coast. The report is called, translated to English, Pollution from Wind Turbine Blades. The Norwegian report is based on research conducted at the University of Strathclyde and the original report was published 22nd of January 2021 with the title Rain Erosion Maps for Wind Turbines based on geographical locations, a case study in Ireland and Britain. The Norwegian report is written in Norwegian and therefore we present some highlights in this presentation. Our report is about pollution from rotor blades along the Norwegian coast. We try to quantify emissions from wind turbines on the Norwegian coast using the published research results. This report can also be useful for other coastal locations. It has been really difficult to find good sources for the problem of emissions from wind turbine blades. All reports and research of this topic are mostly carried out by actors which are paid of the wind industry. The report from Strathclyde is one of the few reports dealing with the volume of emissions from the turbine blades, especially to quantify it. The rotor from an ordinary wind turbine today has the weight of approximately 60 tons together. When the turbine blades are casted, they consist of approximately 60% fiberglass and just under 40% resin and hardener. The resin and hardener hardens to be epoxy. The resin when it's mixed, it consists of a large part of bisphenol A. The bisphenol A is uh, harmful and there will always be residues that do not cure completely. These residues can be released as pure bisphenol out in the mountains, in the drinking water, on the fields, etc. We know that microplastics of epoxy dust break down in animals. We don't know how harmful it is inside the animals, but we know that one kilogram of bisphenol A pollutes 10 billion liters of drinking water. Bisphenol is harmful to marine organisms and to our fertility. And then the question is coming. The dairies, the meat slaughterhouses and the Norwegian sheep farmers is marketing pure milk and pure meat from the clean Norwegian mountains. In the same way, Norwegian sea fish and salmon from the clean sea is marketed. What about the future for this marketing? How big emissions will there be? depends on the most important factors, which are the rotor blade speed, the rotor blade size, how much rain, hail and other particles there is in the air, and also how much salt there is in the air. Salt increases emissions by approximately 40%, which is about offshore wind technology. The good old small wind turbines have relatively small emissions, therefore we haven't been speaking about them before. We also know that large turbines have emission curves that are exponential in terms of length. 
larger length gives greater speed and much greater emissions. Future offshore wind turbines have very large emissions of microplastics and thus some bisphenol A. On the right side you can see an exponential curve. The speed is on the vertical line and the length of the blade is on the horizontal line. And as you can see, when the length is increasing, also the speed is increasingly increasing very rapidly when it comes to bigger lengths. How big emissions will there be in Norway? We have about 400 turbines with rotor diameter bigger than 130 meters. The estimate will then be that the total emissions from these 400 turbines will be about 25 tons a year. With an expected lifetime on 20 years, it will give an estimated amount about approximately 500 tons. Norvia, which is representing the Norwegian wind industry, tries to tell us that it will be an annual emission from each turbine on 150 grams. That will give a maximum of 60 kilos a year for these 400 turbines. And in the red square, you can read. Our estimates show that emissions can be more than 41,000% larger than Novia states. Then we have calculated an example with 20 turbines. The formula for wear and tear is uh, as you can see, and the percentage is uh, calculated depending on the rain at the local place, and the, the rest of the formula is universal. We use an estimate of 700 kilos as weight on the exposed area of the turbine blade. It's the edge. This will give an annual loss of 62 kilos a year for each turbine. 20 turbines will give a mass loss greater than 1.2 tons a year and 25 tons in a 20 year span. And we have only calculated on the annual rainfall as rain. It's uh, not hail, it's not any other particles, it's not uh, salt. If there is a season with a lot of ice and hail, the mass losses will therefore increase far beyond this. And then we have looked at a controversial wind turbine area called Gulersletne. The estimate shows that there will be 80 kilo emissions of micro and macroplastics a year for each turbine. It's 44 turbines on Gulersletne and this will give a total amount of about three and a half ton a year. Over a 20 year span there will be 70.4 tons from this wind turbine area alone. And in the red square you also can see the formula which is used here. Why the percentage is here is bigger is because the rainfall is much bigger here. It's about 3500 millimeters a year. The basis for our calculation is from the experiments of Stratclyde, which quantify mass losses from a test piece. They use an accepted uh, test method, which all companies or mostly companies in uh, the wind industry use themselves. They also can say that emissions increase when there is hail. And uh, we also know that emissions from domestic uh, facilities in Central Europe with no rain 
cannot be taken as bases. The emissions on the coast will be something completely different. Emissions from large turbines will increase exponentially, but emissions will be hidden as their areas are inaccessible. Going out to the ocean, taking pitch pictures and make documentation for the public is hard and difficult. Therefore, there will be invisible. How many workplaces will there be in Norway? The Norvia has told us that it will be 60 kilos of mass loss. Norvia also claims that many jobs will be created with the maintenance around the country. But we don't understand how to make all these jobs just to put 60 kilos with epoxy putty. Even uh, if you think about uh, the access technology, there are some oil changes and uh, other small jobs. The rest are specialist companies traveling around the world. There will be few or no jobs in Norway, nearly no jobs. But some employees to clean up around the turbines maybe. And uh, as earlier told, our estimates shows that emissions can be more than 41,000% larger than Norvia states. This will be a problem for marine life, for the human beings, for all life at the end we uh, frighten. Then we have to thank you for listening and uh, hope that you also can read the, our complete report. It will be translated to English later. Thank you for listening.